Welcome back to another edition of All Chiefed Up. I am Steve and I'm here with Mike. We're still hanging out here in Kansas City having a great time. We're going to take some of your questions so we can answer them real quick right here before this game gets started against the Washington Commanders. Before we get started, you know the drill. If you like our channel and you want to help us out, hit the like button on this video right now. Go back, watch our other videos, like them, comment, all that stuff. If you're not a subscriber yet, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get to 5K before the season ends. Hit that bell to get notifications when we come out with new Chiefs content. Let's jump into these questions, man. Go ahead and knock these out because everybody's just really excited to watch the game today. So we'll make this quick. But uh, first question up, we have Sam from Boulder, Colorado. Says, why do we keep Chad Henney on the team? He said, Michelle looks better and not as conservative. Sam from Boulder, thanks for watching first. Um, that's a, that's, that's a good question. Actually. Um, I personally think Shane Bouchelle's looked really good as well. I just know for a fact that they're going to want to keep Henny on the team because they want that stabilizing presence in case something happens with Mahomes. You got to write the ship. You've got to settle everyone down. Henny provides that he provides a little more leadership. Um, he probably knows the playbook a little better. He knows what coach Reed wants. And I mean, he's just going to go out there and write the ship if something crazy happens. And we've talked about that before. Um, if Henny was a little younger and he was struggling, Michelle has a chance. But I think for this year, for sure, Henny's probably on the roster, no doubt about it. Right. Short answer, Chad Henny has experience. Shane Michelle doesn't. I don't even think he's played in an actual regular season NFL game. So we have to have stability if Mahomes were to go down for whatever reason. We have to have somebody that's been there before and can just keep us afloat and Alex Smith the heck out of a game for us. We got another question from James from Kansas City. He says, do you guys think Pacheco will get more reps in this game than he did in the Bears game? Um, Yeah. I mean, short answer, yeah. Um, I'd say every first team player besides anybody with like some kind of injuries or whatever is probably going to play more than one series. Um, I think Andy already said they're going to go a half but that's probably a little much. I don't think right. it'll go a full half, but yeah, he'll get more carries. He'll probably have five to 10 touches tomorrow is what I would guess at least. Yeah. I think you'll see him a little bit more than you did last game, but he's still going to go out with first team. If they pulled him with Mahomes and everybody else in the first game, I, I don't see any reason why they keep him in the game with second team or anything like that. So I think uh, you're going to see him as long as the first team's out on the field. Right, and I also, like, speaking about running backs, I also think they may give Rojo a few snaps with the first team early, possibly, because, like we said, we got to see Rojo a little bit more with a, a better offensive line. I think it would be good if they did do that. I don't know if they will for sure or not, but, I mean, that would be a good thing so we can see how Rojo is going to respond because right now he's he's on that borderline of getting cut, so uh, I think it would be a fair shot to him to get behind that first team offensive line and get some runs in. For sure. Brian from Kansas. He says, why are we not starting Darian Kennard instead of Wiley? Isn't that why we drafted him? Yes and no. I mean, they eventually want somebody to come in and play, but you can't put him in if he's not ready. And he clearly did not look ready against the Bears. Um, yeah. Wiley struggled a little bit, I would say. But Wiley has been there before, and he will eventually get it together, I think. And I think Kennard will get it together at some point. It just might not be as fast as we think. But hopefully Kennard comes out this week and he looks more solid. He looks more um, grounded. He doesn't look as, you know, deer in the headlights out there. And he kind of just settles in and plays himself into a starting row here soon. Yeah, I think the obvious answer is that Andy Reid and Andy Heck, they, they've seen these guys playing and they think that Wiley's the stronger option right now. So they're going to keep him there. Uh, Kennard needs some time to grow, to learn, get comfortable. But yeah, I think we, we did draft him to probably eventually be a starter at that right tackle position. But if he's not up to it yet, then you're going to see Wiley for a while. All right. We got another question from a, a guy here on YouTube named Dave. He said, who's going to line up against Terry McLaren this week? That's a good question. Um, Probably a little bit McDuffie, probably a little bit Sneed, probably a little bit Fenton. You might see all three of them out there on them. Um, it just depends. They may even throw Josh Williams on them a few times just to get some film. Well, I mean, I don't honestly, know. Uh, I would prefer to see this defense be completely shut down and just get a bunch of three and out. So hopefully only one or two people line up against him, to be quite honest about it, because I really want to see our defense, like, you know, performing, because that's that's key to this season, because we know the offense are going to find ways to move the ball, but we need to make sure that we're getting 
that offense off the field and getting the ball to Mahomes in his hands because we're so used to them dragging out, you know, offensive drives for 10 minutes and then putting points on the board. It's frustrating. So, so I want to I want to see them knock these teams down three and out and get them off the field. Yeah, so essentially if Scary Terry is their number one, he's going to go against our number one. So you're saying who's our number one corner basically? Right now with Fenton coming back off injury, it's probably not him. I'd say it's going to be McDuffie or Sneed, to be honest. More than likely Sneed. But yeah, I mean, that's probably where I'd lean. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see what uh, Andy and Spags decide to do with that one. Uh, that's an interesting matchup, though. That's definitely one that we want to watch along with Orlando Brown Jr. against Chase Young. That's probably the two main matchups that I want to watch. Hey, whether they want to do it or not, how intriguing would it be to just get all film of Trent McDuffie on Terry McLaurin? I mean, when's he going to match up with a better wide receiver? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a pretty good wide receiver off the rip. Not in the preseason. So, yeah, it'd right. be great. It'd be great uh, film to have. So Rick Heller from YouTube, he says, do you think Bolton will lead the team in tackles this year? I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, why not? He did last year. And I think Bolton's going to improve on his rookie campaign. I don't think we see much sophomore slump from Bolton. I think he plays hard. He's smart. And I think we're going to see a similar year to last year, if not better. Yeah. If I had to pick another guy, maybe Justin Reed. Justin Reed looks like he's going to be an animal back there, but let's hope a safety don't lead you in tackles or your defense is struggling. Right. So, a linebacker, a linebacker should lead yeah. you in tackles. So I'm, I'm going to go with Bolton. Yeah. I think Bolton too. Short and sweet. Got a question from Barry here on YouTube. He says, where are y'all going to eat today? Barry, we went to two places for lunch. We actually went to a place called blind box barbecue. They have two locations. Uh, we found it on Google and we were like, this thing's got 2,500 reviews and it's sitting at about a 4.5 average. So we were like, why is nobody, you know, why, is, why have we not heard about this? Why is nobody offering this to us? So we decided to go check it out. Um, I had some burn-ins. They were pretty solid. It wasn't like the greatest burn-ins I ever had, but they were pretty good. Um, overall, it was kind of a, a different style restaurant. I mean, I would say it's pretty good. It's in that middle of the pack road, wouldn't you say, Steve? Right. I got a sandwich called the Notorious P.I.G. It had some smoked sausage, had pulled pork, onion tanglers, and macaroni and cheese on it, actually. Dude, the um, highlight of the day was that cheesy baked corn. Yeah, their cheesy corn bake was absolutely delicious. Um, everything else was pretty middle of the pack, but that, that cheesy corn was top notch. And then tonight for dinner, we actually went to the Kansas City Staple. We went to Stroud's because we hadn't been there before. Uh, ate some fried chicken. Absolutely delicious. I definitely recommend that one to anybody that's uh, coming to Kansas City. You got to get out to Stroud's and check that out. All right. One more question. And it's from Lego My Ego here on YouTube. He said, do you think Jones, Juju, and Butker will play this weekend? Which he's referring to their injuries they had earlier in the week. And he also wanted to know if we think Danny Shelton's going to get in and get any playing time this weekend. Uh, yeah. So Jones with the, I think they said he had a little bit of like a back spasm or something. It's possible he could go out there. Does he need to go out there? I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll let the trainers decide if it was up to me, I'd say no. Um, Juju's knee. I'm pretty sure he's not going to be out there. I wouldn't put him out there. I think Andy may have said he's not playing too. Yeah, I'm not for he sure. did. Um, who's the others? Jones, Juju Butker, and Danny Shelton. Butker. So Butker had the sore ankle or whatever. We've seen him kicking at practice on Thursday. He will probably kick. I don't see why he wouldn't. He's had a full day of rest after that. I think Butker kicks. Um, you could see Reed take another fun one just, you know, for the fun of it. Who knows? But it's going to yeah. be Butker. And then uh, Shelton. Yeah, I think Shelton will get some snaps this week. They got to get him out there and see what he can do. We didn't sign him just sit on the bench the whole year. So we have to see what he can do. And he's a big boy, man. Like we see some pictures of him and that dude, we we were talking. We've seen him in person. Yeah, he's freaking I'm, massive. That's what I'm saying. We were like, dude, maybe we should ask him where to go eat barbecue. And then we're like, oh yeah, he just got here. <laughs> yeah, but Bucker, I think Bucker actually had a sore foot, is why he set out for okay. one day of practice. But he was out there kicking on Thursday and he looked fine. So yeah, he'll be kicking. Uh, but yeah, Juju, he's not gonna play. Andy Reid already said he's not gonna play. Chris Jones is kind of up in the air, but I don't see any reason to put him out there. He looked solid in the first week, and we know he'll look solid this week. So why risk it? Uh, I think he had some back spasms or something. So go ahead and give him a little bit of rest and see if that helps out. Yeah, to add to that, um, he didn't mention it, but Miko coming off the groin, I wouldn't want to see Miko out there either. No. I don't know if the groin injury is like 
I don't think it's a big deal, but I still don't think I put them out there. There's no point. This is the preseason, guys. Like, if there's an injury and and they can avoid playing, just don't play them. Yeah, I know everybody's excited to see the team and see what they're going to do. And players like Juju and McColl, you know, they're exciting players. And Chris Jones is an exciting player on defense. And you want to see them play because it's fun to watch. We want to save these guys for the regular season because we have a heck of a schedule to to power through. I mean, it's, it's got to be very high on the strength of schedules. It's not number one in the NFL this year. Uh, so there's going to be, you know, a lot of energy spent, uh, especially in the first eight weeks. It's really rough. We played no team that was a losing team last season. Uh, so we're going to need every bit of energy and health that they have. So go ahead and sit them now if we can. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the day. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to smash that like button right now. If you're a subscriber, thank you. If you're not, hit that sub button right now. What are you waiting for? We're trying to get to 5,000 before the season ends, and I think we're going to get there. Make sure you hit that share button. That way you can share it on your social media, and all other Chiefs fans can know where to find good content on YouTube. Hit the bell so you get notifications when we come out with new stuff. Mike, you got anything left for Chiefs Kingdom today before we sign out and get over to this Washington Commanders game? I don't. Um, I'm going to be there with the Pacheco jersey, the homemade Pacheco. If y'all see us, Pacheco jersey, come by, say hi. We'll, we'll we'll give you a high five or something. Also, if you think Carson Wentz sucks, hit that like button right now and throw those subs around. That's all I got. If you know Carson Wentz sucks, like, subscribe, hit the bell. We're done. Bye. Go enjoy the game. You're You're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. Cause I'm safe from my soul.